What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 18 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at tile sets. I'm going to show you how to set up the basics for your tile sets, I'm going to show you how to then edit your tile sets, and then I'm also going to import a new tile set. With that said, let's get into it. So, um, up in the top of the bar here, there's a database button, you can press that, and um, there's all these tabs. And uh, most of them don't matter. The one that I care about, though, is the Tile Sets tab. Right here is basically where you're going to be spending most of your time if you ever click this button. Okay, so along the left is this list of Tile Sets that we have already set up in Essentials. They're, you know, outside, Pokemon Center, gyms, you know, all that good stuff. And um, next to that, you'll see the name and then the Tile Set graphic. Um, this is where you, like, select the image that you want to use for your Tile Set. Underneath that there are auto tiles, which take up the top row, and these are basically animated tiles. Um, I'll touch on those briefly later, but for the most part you can select auto tiles that have already been created, and um, some of them make tiling the maps easier, and some of them also have little animations on them. So um, you'll see like Sand Shore has like multiple frames of animation where the sand, I mean where the water rises up on the sand and like brushes back. Pretty nice. Uh, underneath that, down here, are panorama graphic, fog graphic, and battle back graphic. You don't need to worry about those. You can just leave those empty. Those are totally cool. And then here you see our lovely tile set. So we are using outside. This is the outside tile set image we have selected. And you can just scroll down and look at all of everything that's been created. And uh, all the art and everything. So, um, then you'll see on every single tile. Every tile is a 32 by 32 um, image, by the way. Or, 32 by 32 square, um, you'll see a bunch of circles and X's. And if you click on another button, you'll see a bunch of arrows. Let me tell you what this means. Passage, zero means you can walk on it. X means you cannot walk on it. So for a lot of things, like trees, you'll have X's so you can't walk on them. But maybe have it be passable towards the top so you can walk behind the tree. Um, all these floor tiles are circles. All the water is X so that you can't walk on them. And then the next one, passage four directions. What that essentially means is which directions you can walk into this tile from. So for most passage tiles, basically a circle or all four are synonymous, they're the same. But for some, if you want to make it so that you can only walk through it one way, like a little ledge. See, the ledges, you can only walk into this one from the top. You can only walk into this one from the from the right side, you know? So if you only want, if you want it to be like one direction pass, then you want to use the passage four directions. Priority is a really important and interesting one. Priority means if the tile appears on top of you or not, like above you. So remember before when I said you could walk behind the tree? Well, if the priority of the uh, top part of your tree is not set, then the tree will you'll appear on top of the tree. But if you set the priority of the tree to be like two or three. Um, then it will appear above you. So I'd recommend just definitely messing around priority on some tiles. Um, but for the most part, this is a good general rule. Like have two for the top of a tree, maybe have one for the centers of the tree. Um, next is bush flag. I leave this empty, I'm pretty sure. Wait, never mind. I guess you, you can set it for these, for the, uh, the two grasses here. Um, but other than that, this is largely unused. The counter flag. Counter flag is interesting. What counter flag means is whether you're, it's like um, like the Pokemon Center when you talk to the uh, Nurse Joy over the counter, you know, it's like a uh, it's like a, like a desk in a way. Um, counter flag allows you to talk and interact with other events across tiles. So, uh, like if I go indoor, or I can go inside. Um, see, a lot of these tables, these desks um, are treated. They have the counter flag enabled. Uh, if I go to the Pokemart or Poke Center. The, um, the counter that Nurse Joy sits behind has the counter flag enabled so that way you can talk to them over the counter. And then the next one, maybe one of the most important ones, is terrain tag. Um, well, this kind of determines what your tile does in a sense. Zero is neutral, it doesn't really do anything special. Uh, two means you can interact with wild Pokemon when walking on it, so it treats it as like grass. Seven means it's water. Um, basically, there's there's a whole long list of uh, terrain tags. You can actually go to the Pokemon Essentials Wiki. I'll put this link in the description. They have a list of all the terrain tags with the numbers. I think it goes 1 to 15. Yeah. And uh, they tell you what each one does. So you can set the terrain tag. 
And um, in RPG Maker, one thing to note, um, you can just left click to raise the terrain tag. And I think it only goes up to seven in RPG Maker. But if you open your game, you can actually set the terrain tag um, with the debug menu. So let me show you that real quick. So we're in our game. I went, I'm gonna go, it's close to the bottom. Uh, there it is, set terrain tags. Let's see, you can just do, well, yeah, load some recent edits, okay. So you can press Z to open the menu. You can press page up and page down to go up and down a lot. Or you can just press enter on one tile when you select it. And then uh, you can set it to be like 15 if I want. Um, but I don't want to save those changes. I want to keep that zero. So that's how you get higher numbers for your terrain tags. You go into the debug here. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the next thing I said I was going to talk about. I'm talking about editing the tile set. I highly, highly, highly recommend you use Photoshop for this. You can do it with paint. But honestly, if you're going to make a Pokemon game, having photo with, if you don't have Photoshop, you're at like a large disadvantage. So I'm going to be doing all this in Photoshop. So here we have our outside tile set for our game. I've opened it. And uh, let's make a red tree. Let's do that. So what I can do actually is I can just copy this. And one thing to note also is, remember, every single tile is 32 by 32. So our tree will be a multiple of 32. So it's it's two wide, so that should be 64 wide. And I think three tall, so that should be 96. Yes, so 64 by 96. Cool, I copied our tree. And um, I'll paste them in a another 64 by 96 gap down here. Drag it down, cool. So you gotta make sure everything's aligned and looks pretty good. I think that's good for our tree, tree placement. Maybe you like that? Yeah, cool. So now I can delete the squares underneath it, which are also another 64 by 96. Let's see. So I didn't get the selection perfect. I'm missing the bottom layer there, but... Quick fix. Cool. So now we have our new tree right here. Um, so what I can do, like this is just like a real cheap way to do it. Um, if you want to actually make your tile sets look a lot better, then you're going to want to do a lot of the art and pixel art yourself. But uh, one thing that's like super cheap and easy to do is just apply color overlay and then set the blend mode to hue. There we go. I mean, it's not red. It's like pink. I can make a blue tree. You can pick like an orange tree. Let's do like a yellow tree. I said I was going to do a red tree. Let's make a yellow tree instead. So um, what I like to do is do control S and save it as the outside.psd. So then you can just keep you can just keep hitting control S to save the uh, Photoshop document. And then when you're ready to actually put it in your game, do Control shift s to save it as outside.png, and then overwrite the already existing one. Cool, so once it's done saving, uh, you can go back into RPG Maker, and then exit, well not exit, but basically load a new map, and then go back into your old map, and then that will have applied the tile set changes. So now I can scroll down, and here is our yellow tree. It's there, in the game. Cool, I can just drop it, plop, there's our tree. So in the game though right now, our tree won't have collision, it won't stop us. Um, I kind of messed it up a little bit like on the bottom, but oh, whatever. Um, so let's make it so our tree has collision. We can use the previous examples of the tree where, let's see, the bottom four are not passable. Oh cool, wait, I want to make the top two passable. By default these were impassable, so I want to make them passable up top, apply the changes, and then priority to one. Apply. Cool. So now in game, our tree should function like a normal tree, except now that it's yellow. Um, so if you want to do a lot of your own custom art, uh, you know, make your own crazy tiles, you totally can. It's really easy to just throw them in and um, get them in your game. So there we go. That's a that's a new tree. So the next thing I said I was going to cover is importing a new tile set. So lately, I've actually been streaming myself working on a game, and I've been using a lot of Pokemon black and white tiles, because I think they look awesome. So, I, I'll, I'll link to this in the description, but there is a um, another version of Essentials out there um, that was testing black and white functionality, Pokemon black and white. Um, and I'll link to that in the description, but it's by Klein Studio. Very, very awesome. You can go into their graphics tile sets after you download it, and uh, take a look at some of the tile sets that they have. I'm going to copy Outdoor. And then go into, let's see, not this one. 
I'm copying their outdoor and I'm gonna go to our game and then just throw it in there. So their outdoor. Oh wait, I think I already had it. Okay, cool. But yeah, take their outdoor, throw it into your game, your tile sets folder. And then what you can do is make a new tile set. So down here I already have one made named test, but really you can just click here, down here. You can also change the maximum amount of tile sets that you have. So if you want to have a ton of tile sets, you can totally do that. Um, so you can make a new one, and I'll call this one BW Outdoor. The tile set graphic, I want to select Outdoor. Cool. So here it is. Um, so the, it's kind of a pain in the ass um, when you're importing a new tile set for the first time because remember when I talked about all these, you have to go and set them for every single one. So passable, impassable, priorities, terrain tags. It's really easy to mess them up. So it's definitely one of those like trial and error things. But I'm gonna make a couple trees using this new tile set. I'm just gonna make a new map with a couple trees. So let's see, I'm setting all these to be impassable. The ones up on top are passable. The priority for all of these will be a little higher, so we appear behind them. Cool. So, let's make a new map with our new tile set. New map, and I'll call this test map. Cool. And then uh, BW outdoor. Boom. Okay, so here's our new map, and it has our new tile set. Uh, let's use the grass that they have, and then just kind of fill it all in a nice little grass field and then uh, let's take their trees or the trees from this and uh, put them on an up, an, uh, another layer as I stutter over myself cool so it's not perfect um, you're definitely gonna want to tweak these that's where the Photoshop comes in just keep on editing all your tile sets throw them in save them keep keep on resaving them Let's, uh, let's go into our game now, though, and see how out of place our character looks in our new map. So you can press F9 and do warp to map, and then just warp to test map. So here I am walking around on my Pokemon black and white tile set. Here are the trees that have the collision and the proper uh, priorities and everything. So yeah, that is how you import a tile set. There are plenty of tile sets out there that you can take a look at and make your game beautiful. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, it's definitely complicated stuff. Editing tile sets uh, requires a lot of time and patience. You're undoubtedly going to be closing and reopening your game and making something passable and then making it impassable, changing the terrain tags a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's a hugely iterative process. But yeah, like I said before, I hope this video helped. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to follow on Twitter and Twitch and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. And yeah, check, check the description for all the links to other tile sets and resources. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.